Hello everyone, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. Could the types of foods that we consume increase or perhaps decrease our risk for mood disorders and specifically depression? You know, on the Empowering Neurologist, we have had quite a bit of discussion as of late uh, with reference to the topic uh, of the role of the microbiome of the gut bacteria and its products in terms of mood, in terms of regulating the mood. We do see some correlations between changes in the gut bacteria, for example, and uh, increased risk for depression. So what changes then the gut bacteria that might set us up for depression and other inflammatory disorders? Well, as we've talked about quite a bit, uh, the most important thing that a variable in terms of changing the microbiome for worse or for better seems to be the foods that we consume. Who knew? Uh, and in a recent what we call meta-analysis, I'll explain that in just a moment, entitled Dietary Patterns and Depression Risk, a Meta-Analysis, uh, researchers looked at a bunch of studies, and that's really what a meta-analysis is all about. In this study, <clears throat> they reviewed 21 different studies in 10 countries and tried to draw correlations between dietary patterns and risk for developing depression. And as we have this discussion moving forward, I'd like you not to think just about the specific foods that I mentioned, but more importantly, how those foods might relate to changes in the gut bacteria and therefore uh, secondarily might relate to increased risk or decreased risk of depression. And here's what they found. Let me read it to you. A dietary pattern characterized by a high intake of fruit, vegetables, whole grain, fish, olive oil, low-fat dairy and antioxidants and low intakes of animal foods was apparently associated with a decreased risk for depression. Well, uh, I, I'm, it's a little unusual what they say, a low intake of animal foods, but yet a high intake of fish, I guess um, we'll leave it at that. Uh, but the point is, the, uh, this seems to be a good diet as it relates to the health of the gut bacteria, of and its components, what the bacteria make, etc. Now, you might be surprised that here we are talking about whole grains, and I would indicate to you uh, that whole grains are probably a good idea if they are gluten-free and they are organically raised, non-GMO, and eaten in moderation. Why do I say that? Because whole grains are not a bad idea in terms of increasing your intake of dietary fiber. When people suddenly go gluten-free, they decrease overall their fiber consumption because oftentimes they will eliminate not only the gluten-containing uh, grains, wheat, barley, uh, rye, and typically oats, but also across the board, all of the uh, grains and grain-like things, for example, quinoa, uh, that they think they should avoid. So, you know, we talked recently about this notion that if you go gluten-free, you're increasing your risk of heart disease. Nothing uh, could be further from the truth. Uh, in that study, in fact, the authors indicated it was because people going gluten-free tend to reduce their overall consumption of fiber. Fiber, very important for the gut bacteria. Let me continue. A dietary pattern characterized by high consumption of red and or processed meat, refined grains, sweets, high-fat dairy products, butter, potatoes and high fat gravy and low intakes of fruits and vegetables is associated with increased risk of depression. Uh, the results of this meta-analysis suggest that healthy pattern characterized uh, above may decrease the risk of depression, whereas Western style may increase the risk of depression. More studies are required. Uh, the point is that, you know, they're sort of castigating, as you heard, red meat uh, and I think with good reason. You know, by and large, red meat is not a good uh, food choice uh, because by and large, red meat from the factory is uh, created in such a way that it is not good for you. And certainly uh, the hormones, uh, et cetera, the GMO food that the uh, cattle has been given are not going to turn out to be good for your gut bacteria either. So what did we learn? Oh, and by the way, as far as the high fat dairy products, again, these high-fat dairy products are concentrated in terms of 
uh, their levels of antibiotics and pesticides and other things that are not good for you and not good for your gut bacteria. So unfortunately, the 21 studies that were looked at to create this meta-analysis didn't fully break down the type of meat in terms of was it uh, grass-fed beef or was it your typical almost always consumed uh, factory type of uh, beef that people generally eat and goes into these sort of statistics. Similarly, they didn't look at the dairy products in terms of how they were created. But I think if you take a step back and look at the broad strokes here about what this study is telling us, by and large, the dietary recommendations that they make are higher in fiber. You noticed olive oil on the good list. You notice vegetables rich in antioxidants on the good list. All the things that we know are good for us and also good for our gut bacteria. Recalling from earlier episodes of The Empowering Neurologist that we have talked quite extensively about uh, how a depression is an inflammatory disorder. I wrote about it in BrainMaker and how inflammation is regulated by the health of our gut bacteria. So again, uh, when we eat food, we have to ask ourselves, how is it nurturing us, of course, uh, but more importantly, I believe, how is it nurturing or how might it be threatening to our gut bacteria? So uh, look at the reference. I think it's really interesting. Thanks for joining me. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. Bye for now.